Hey guys, what is up? It's Kat here. Happy... Well, it's actually Wednesday. I was just about to say happy Tuesday night, but it's actually Wednesday morning. Well, it's actually still... It is still Tuesday. It's 11.59 and we have a brand spanking new episode four. And for those of us who have been active on Twitter this week, we know that the goat himself, Carl Weathers, is directing tonight's episode and I have absolutely loved his work. In the previous seasons, I think his episodes are always really, really well done and exciting. He also dropped the exciting title, The Foundling, which certainly piqued all of our interests during this week and definitely revived the conversation of theories surrounding Grogu and Order 66 flashbacks and whether or not we might be seeing that clip from the trailer in tonight's episode with a, such a fitting title. So without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, what a sweet shot. This is how they spend their time. They literally just train all day long. <laughs> Wait, I think I saw his armor under his cloak. No, he's gonna get hurt. <gasps> Ooh, Paz's kid versus Din's kid. Let's go. He challenges. He's too small. What weapon? Let the challenge decide. Bring the training guns. Why doesn't he wear a helmet? Then he's too young to fight. One does not speak unless one knows. Well, I know. Perhaps this lesson is for you then, Darts. Baby! Oh. Don't worry, he's just proud of you. <laughs> One round, highest score wins. <laughs> he doesn't know how to fire darts. He's got this. Trust me. No! Point! <laughs> Point! I've seen what you can do. It's okay. <laughs> did you teach him that? Not me. Luke Skywalker did. Okay, Game of Thrones! <gasps> it's really turned into Game of Thrones. training team to accompany you but too young to join them <laughs> if you wish to become a mandalorian there is much work to attend to this is the forge it is the heart of mandalorian culture wait he's gonna have flashbacks just as we shape ourselves he's gonna have flashbacks Frick. Don't worry, we're gonna meet up with some friends of mine. But hold on, 
It's gonna be a bumpy landing. They're right behind Let's go. What about the others? There are no others. Oh my god. I'm in best let go. It is with these scraps of Beskar that I forged your next piece of armor. <laughs> you will grow into this rondelle as you grow into your station, foundling Grogu. Why am I crying? The target is on the top of this peak. We sleep out of line of sight and climb at first light. How do you eat when other people are around? <laughs> you don't. Find a place where you can take off your helmet. So she's sticking with you are it. The leader of the war party. You have the honor of staying by the fire. The raptor's lair is atop the highest peak, so we have to make sure not to fire on the raptor. It will kill the foundling if attacked. The upper body strength. <laughs> That's a big nest. <gasps> the helmets! It's not here. Let's find the kid. Wait until we clear the area. He's my son. Ragnar! OMG, Ragnar, Ragnar, let's go. What a name. <laughs> Why am I crying? Bo Katan Kreeves, you have honored your house and all of Mandalore. This is the way. And we have brought you three more foundlings in need of care and training. How did they fit those on the ship? You're in need of a repair. Come with me. Would it be acceptable? And another with the Mythosaur. The Mythosaur belongs to all Mandalorian. I would like that. Would you say if I told you I saw one? A Mythosaur? I would say you are very lucky. I mean a real one. Beneath the living water, it was real. This is the way. I'm at best, yeah! No effing way. Oh my god, that shot of the burning temple. Sweet lord. I would certainly had a, a Grogu flashback, you know, on the bingo cards for this evening's episode, but I certainly was not in no way, shape, or form was anywhere near prepared to see another shot of the burning Jedi temple. Sweet lord. But the real win for tonight is for us Phantom Menace fans and of course just the entire fandom in general and Ahmed Best. Oh, what a surprise. What a goat. What a goat way. Oh my gosh. I just, that is so, I'm just... <laughs> I'm so effing happy for him, especially knowing what he went through. Back in the day, decades ago, when The Phantom Menace did actually premiere the reception to Jar Jar Binks. You know, I can't speak to what 
his experience was in the fandom, but you know, Jar Jar Binks is certainly a polarizing character. So for him to just come come back in this fashion and completely, they, they achieved what I was hoping they would because at this point, all of us have had years to theorize and come up with our own personal ideas or stories or theories about how we think Grogu survived, who saved him from the temple, if he was kidnapped from the temple, like what actually went down. And I was beginning to be worried that whatever it was going to actually end up being would be something that I already had seen in a theory or something on Twitter. And I was like, are they even gonna be able to surprise us anymore? And they certainly did. A surprise to be sure, but a freaking welcome one. What an, what an amazing, just amazing. My heart is so happy, but also that entire sequence, the, oh, seeing the Jedi Temple burning, like I'm not, I'm not sleeping tonight. I didn't have that on the cards for this evening. It's starting to feel very purposeful why they brought Grogu back this episode especially. I'm feeling really, really glad <laughs> that they made that decision and it's finally being kind of put to use. Grogu's kind of not had like a back burner role throughout this season. It's obviously been about other key players like Din and Bo, Pershing, Elia Kane. Like it's, it's had different spotlights and Grogu has kind of just been, you know, a sidekick on the sidelines. So I really loved that this episode solidified and validated their decision to bring him back and it's obviously paying off in regards for character development for Din too. Seeing this father-son relationship with Paz and Ragnar, what a freaking epic name. I'm sorry. If you're a fellow Vikings fan, that's a sweet name for Din, especially in that moment. Like my soul would have been crushed if he was witnessing that you know that father-son bond and the relief at learning that your your child is alive i can't even imagine having watched that scene god forbid din didn't have grogu back in his life like it made it all the more special and he's certainly on the, the path for becoming a mandalorian here which it's really interesting because we spent the first two seasons you know wanting him to tap in and become a jedi and now the kind of ambition has been changed it is very interesting seeing uh, how Din isn't certainly discouraging him from tapping into the force, but I do think that they are definitely going to be exploring some of the repercussions of Grogu parting ways with Luke, choosing to go with Din, choosing compassion. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. He's no longer getting proper training from the literal expert in the Jedi way now. So I am very curious and cautious about what this might mean in regards to his, you know, his training's just going unchecked. He doesn't have somebody there to necessarily direct him to the proper use of the force, I'm sure, as the Jedi would want to call it. Not to say it's like improper, the dark side or whatnot. The force is what you make of it. But I am sure the Jedi wouldn't want to just have a youngling as clearly skilled and powerful and talented as Grogu is. I'm sure him going around unchecked, uh, starting to get reacquainted with his capabilities and his comfort level with the Force, I think we might see some consequences of that down the line in the season because as we saw here, you know, some foreshadowing, Bo asking, oh, did you teach him to do these crazy stunts and Din acknowledges like, no, it wasn't me. That's a sign like Din doesn't know. Din, Din can't control Grogu when it comes to the force and who's to say, you know, that Grogu isn't just going to be growing stronger, especially if he's encouraged to use it and Din can't exactly steer him in the right direction or help him dial it back. Grogu isn't going to forsake his training. Din certainly isn't discouraging it. Something might happen down the line and Grogu's gonna tap into the force and we've already seen him revert to more insidious ways of using it. He literally force choked Cara Dune when he believed she was a threat to Din in season one. And that was that was when he was still just getting reacquainted. He was still just kind of like waking back up with it. Who's to say his inclination isn't gonna go there again? So yes, yeah, long as story short to bring it back, I'm just excited that they are getting Grogu kind of reintegrated here and tapping back into his storyline and proving why they brought him back in the first place. And overall, this episode was so much fun. I knew it would be. I I feel a little bit more like Bo might actually be buying into this uh, with the children of the watch for now. And I know a lot of theories are suggesting, oh, she's going along with it so that when the time comes, she can use the children of the watch for her 
advantage or she's just using it to gain their loyalty so that when she does try to reclaim Mandalore, you know, she has people at her back. I don't know, I feel like if anything, this episode left me thinking that she doesn't necessarily have self-serving motives for joining them and it seems like just genuine curiosity to go from having nobody at your side anymore to this entire group of people thanking you and praising you and showering you with love and appreciation. Even if there was an inkling within her that kind of thought it would be a stupid idea to join the children of the watch. Like even if there was some hesitation in her initially at the prospect of walking the way with them, I think if anything, this episode, it helped steer her in the direction of, hey, maybe it's not so bad. I don't know. What do you guys think? I was just glad at least that we got to see Katie Sackhoff's face in this episode because she's too beautiful. That was like my main hesitation about her joining the children of the watch. I want to see her face. She's too glorious to not be on screen. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you, Am I just wrong? Am I misinterpreting this? Do you guys think, no, she totally is still just going to use them to supplant her claim here to the throne? And for little baby Grogu as well, are you guys excited to see him become a full-fledged Mandalorian here? Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. And of course, those Order 66 flashbacks. Oh, it's been a long time coming, but geez, I was not ready. Thank you guys as always so, so much for watching. And I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye, guys.